The Yanmar diesel engine and its clones is not particularly complex. It only really requires three things to operate. The first being fuel. The second thing is compression. And then that leaves us a third thing, which is an air supply. There you have the decompression lever. If you press that down, it decompresses the engine, allowing easier starting. But if we leave it in the up position and we try to pull on the starter, an engine with high compression, once it gets to a certain point, won't turn over. And here you see that that's the case. I can't turn the engine over. So this indicates that compression isn't the issue. So next, we'll have a look at the fuel. Now I know that the fuel tank is full. I've checked this previously. And I also know that the fuel tank valve at the bottom is in the open position, which allows unrestricted flow of the fuel down to the fuel pump. So up to that point, I know that there is fuel. So what this might result in then, since we have compression and fuel, we could have a problem with the air supply. So the first thing that we're going to do then is we're going to remove the cover on the top and we're going to then have a look at the air filter to ensure that it's not too blocked and restricting the access to the air. Now I know that's not the case here because I've already checked it on this engine and I know that the air filter is in fine condition. So this to me would indicate a problem with the fuel. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a slightly closer look at the fuel pump and what the main issue is with these types of engines. These engines here are very, very reliable. However, there is one problem that generally makes them stop operating. And this problem is that when the fuel's been standing for a while and the engine hasn't been in operation, you have access to the fuel. However, the fuel sitting inside the fuel pump causes it to freeze up. So inside you have a plunger and what's acting on the plunger is a cup that's riding on a cam inside the engine. Now when the cam compresses the plunger all the way to the top, it can freeze in that position. When this happens, regardless of how often you're pulling on that cord trying to get it to start, nothing will happen. So if we remove the nut at the bottom here, this gives us access to a little trapdoor and we can open and we can see if we have a frozen plunger or not. So with the little trapdoor removed, what we're looking for is we're looking for a little needle inside. So as we start to adjust the throttle, we can see the needle moving if the plunger is not stuck. If the plunger is stuck, then we know that we have a problem and we have to un unfreeze that plunger inside. This isn't as bad a job as it sounds. So with the close up now, we can see with the little window removed, you have access to the innards of the fuel pump. So as I move the throttle here backwards and forwards, you can see the little needle moving. So this indicates that the plunger is free to move. However, it wasn't before. If it is frozen, it's usually going to be frozen in the position where the needle will be to the far right, which means that the plunger is as far up as it can go, not allowing any displacement. So you can pull on that lever on the starter as much as you like, but you're not going to get any pumping because you have no displacement of the plunger going on. So what we have to do then is we have to remove these other two nuts on either side of the outlet side of the pump, remove the fuel inlet hose, and we have to take the whole assembly out and we have to have a closer look. Now with the entire assembly removed, this gives us access to the fuel pump. Now here we can see the window we were looking at before where the needle was. At the top there we have a valve assembly, and that's on the outlet side of the pump, inlet side of the pump there. And then if I flip it over, you can see the cup that is acting on the spring with the plunger inside it. Now the cam rides against the bottom of the cup and pushes the spring up and down and that's what moves your plunger. So if the spring is fully compressed, then you know that you have no displacement and therefore you have no pumping action of that plunger inside. So this is a good indicator as well as the needle not moving, that you have a frozen piston inside that pump. So you don't want to be bashing on this assembly. So the first thing you want to do is remove the valve assembly at the top because it's quite sensitive. 
So if we remove that there and we set that to the side, this means that we don't have to be quite so careful with the rest of the pump. So what we want to do then is we want to just uh, have a, a bit of a look inside, make sure it's nice and clean. And then we want to use a block of wood. Now, if the assembly is frozen at the very bottom, what we can do is we can put a block of wood on top there and we can give it some taps with the hammer. And the kinetic energy in the force is going to move the piston up into the body of the pump. So if we have a look there very closely, we can see it's in the down position. And as we hit on the top there, that would cause that piston to be moving upwards towards the block of wood. Now if it's stuck in the top position, and stuck all the way to the top, we flip it over and we reverse it. We put the block of wood on the bottom side and we hit it there until we can free up that little nub at the bottom on the back end of the needle. Don't be levering on this hard. If it is stuck, that's not the way to free it up. You free it up by using the block of wood and the hammer. So you put it on there, and if it's stuck at the bottom, you tap on the piece of wood there. If it's stuck in the top position, you put the piece of wood on the bottom and you hit it that way, and that will unfreeze it. But you don't go levering on that little nub, and you don't go hitting the spring at the bottom to try free it up. These are precision machined, so you don't want to be damaging that and then you just test. You move that backwards and forwards and the more you work this, the easier it's going to be to move the needle and you know that you've unfreed the piston inside. And then you can use some acetone and a Q-tip and you can clean the inside a little bit and get rid of any glazing that may be present. So when you're putting the pump back in, it's important to line up that slot with the nub on the back end of the needle, as we see there. If you forget to do this, then you'll have no throttle control. Also, be very wary of getting any rubbish in that part of the engine. So just keep it covered and be careful with it. So now that we've assembled it, we've put everything back, we need to bleed the system. So on the outlet side of the pump, what I'm doing now is I'm undoing the fuel line. So once I undo the fuel line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to decompress the engine and I'm just going to pull it a few times. So here we see the outlet line going to the injector. Now I'm going to undo the outlet line and I'm going to remove the outlet line so that I can observe it as I turn the engine over because turning the engine over is going to move the cam that will act on the cup and therefore act on the piston and it will start pumping fuel. So I need to pump the fuel through the line to ensure that I have no more air in that line. If you have air in a diesel fuel line, you won't be able to get it to run because it relies on extremely high pressures. So here you can see me cranking the motor over and then very shortly you're going to start seeing the diesel flowing out of the fuel line. Use the decompression lever here, hold it in to make it easy for you to crank and here you can see the diesel starting to spit out. So we put the line back in and we tighten it all up. And once we tighten it up, then we can give it a test and see if that's the problem. So I'll just nip this up now. And we can give this a shot to see how this is going to work. It's a very simple process. There's nothing complex. Don't tighten this up too much or you can crack the injector body. So you want to be careful about how tight you make this. So now we turn the throttle on, use a decompression lever, and we try to start it. Now at this point, we can see the engine's kicking a little, but we're really not getting any ignition, and we know the compression is good, we know it has air, we know the fuel pump is working. So that only leaves air in the system. So we see it's just not starting, so we know that we haven't bled the line out enough. So what we want to do then is we want to repeat the fuel bleeding process that we just went through. So here we've just bled the line again, and we've put it back together, and we've made sure that we've run quite a bit of diesel through it. So now we're going to decompress it, turn the throttle on, 
and give it a pull and it should kick first time if you have no air in the line it should start the first pull and there we go and now the engine is working and it's running perfectly they're very robust engines and the problem is usually something very simple and 90% of the time it's a stuck plunger so if you follow this process here you should be right and you should be able to get your engine running again and your generator operational good luck